You're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're continuing to unpack the governor's budget proposal. And for our next conversation, we're turning our attention to funding for the lawyers who prosecute and defend criminal cases around the Empire State. To help us make sense of what Governor Kathy Hochul is proposing, we're joined once again by Kevin Stadelmeyer, an attorney who is the first deputy defender for Erie County's Assigned Counsel Programs Criminal Division and is the legislative committee chair for the New York State Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. Welcome back to the show, Kevin. Good morning, David. So in the governor's budget briefing book, there is a reference to increased rates for assigned counsels, so-called 18B attorneys are what are referenced in the book. Can you explain what these lawyers do and the hourly rate increase that's coming their way? So 18B is the county law under Executive Law 722, which provides counsel for both criminal and family court across the state outside of those attorneys who provide counsel in institutional provider settings. So these are independent contractor attorneys, sometimes small firm attorneys, who are independent contractors discharging this very, very important work. Across the state, it's about a third of all criminal and family court cases. In some counties, like Erie County, where I work, it's a, it's a bit more. It's about 68% of all criminal and family court cases. And are these attorneys who are utilized, say, if public defender's offices are overwhelmed or just don't have the capacity to take on some of these cases? It depends per, you know, by county. Some counties maintain what they call a conflict defender. So you have an institutional provider who takes all the cases and then those cases that they're conflicted out of, the 18B panel picks them up. In places like Erie County, we have a divided contract where the Legal Aid Bureau of Buffalo picks up a percentage of cases, mostly in Buffalo City Court, while the assigned counsel program picks up all the towns and villages uh, as well as the higher level felonies in Erie County. So it really depends county by county. Okay. And so the wages that they're paid, what's the governor proposing to do? Well, so right now the, the rates have been stagnant since 2004. So for 19 years, misdemeanors have been paid at a rate of $60 an hour, felonies at a rate of $75 an hour, family court at $75 an hour. You know, we're heartened to hear that the governor is finally coming around to the idea that these rates need to be raised after 19 years. Unfortunately, her proposal really falls far short of of what's reasonable and and likely what's lawful. What she's proposing is to raise the rates. $158 in downstate, so New York City, Long Island, and Hudson Valley, as well as Westchester County, and then $119 for the rest of the state. And it would be one rate for misdemeanors and felonies in family court. Um, so while that's you know great that she's interested in raising the rates, you really do have to unpack the proposal to see where it falls short. So the first place it falls short is you're telling downstate clients, downstate attorneys, that their cases are worth more than upstate attorneys, upstate clients, trying to assign it on a cost of living basis. I mean, the cost of living in Erie County is roughly comparable to that, which is in Dutchess County or in uh, Albany County is comparable to Sullivan County. Trying to you know do this on a cost of living basis doesn't really pass muster. Where she gets this $158 an hour rate from, from New York City, there was a, a lawsuit that was filed, as, as we talked about the last time, um, which was decided in July and currently on appeal which set the rate at $158 an hour in New York City, retroactive to February of 2022. Um, That rate, coincidentally, is the Criminal Justice Act rate. It's the the rate which federal defenders, federal public defenders, are paid. So that's the rate they keyed it to, which is how she came up with the 158. How she came up with the 119, we're not really sure. I'm sure somebody crunched some numbers and tried to make, again, a cost-of-living comparison between Manhattan and, say, Niagara County. Um, but we're not 100 percent sure what that is. So, you know, dividing the state by cost of living is, a, is b- very problematic, probably on equal protection grounds. I'm not sure it would pass constitutional muster. Additionally, she's looking to cap the amount you can bill on any given case. So in downstate, it would be $10,000 and upstate, it would be $7,000. Now, it's important to note that we currently do have fee caps on these cases. For misdemeanors, it's currently $2,200. For felonies, it's $4,400. But we have the ability to petition the court in the event that those fees are exceeded. So anytime we go over those, we need simply to file a motion with the court, outline the additional work that we did, which required the excess fees, and those are routinely approved by judges. Um, This new proposal takes that ability of attorneys out. We're no longer able to petition the court for those fees. And I will tell you that in Erie County, even with the rates being $75 an hour, in every single homicide defense we've had in the last year, we've exceeded $7,000 we'll have an impossible time trying to assign cases if we have these hard caps. Uh, Finally, the the biggest problem uh, with her proposal is that it does not require the state to pay these increases. 
it foists the entire amounts onto the counties to pay as an unfunded mandate. Now, currently, the counties pay uh, 18B rates out of their county budgets. That's been the case you know, since the inception of 18B. The counties have paid the $1675 an hour. We have been telling the state, and based upon some of the things that they have said, that this is a constitutional mandate for the state to pay any increased costs for indigent defense going forward. It really is that the state should be paying all of the costs for indigent defense. But for right now, you know, the counties have agreed to pick up some of this cost. But if you take a look at the Hurl Herring lawsuit, which was decided several years ago, it was agreed by the state indigent defense is state-mandated cost, a constitutionally mandated cost. And for them now and for the governor now to say, well, hey, listen, you know, I don't care what we said in Hurl Herring. We need this money to be picked up by the counties. It's currently picked up, you know, really cuts against jurisdiction. It really cuts against, you know, what, what the Constitution says about indigent defense. So, you know, we have, all, we have a lot of these problems. You know, the, the bifurcated rate is speciously linked to some cost of living analysis that we haven't seen, the hard case gaps without the ability for counsel to petition, and the, the cost being borne uh, not by the state but by the counties. So, yes, while the rates are raised, this also, you know, is not sufficient. It's nimble. And we're, being, we're fighting very hard against it, uh, looking for something far more reasonable. Well, for listeners just joining us, you're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with Kevin Stottlemyre, an attorney who is the first deputy defender for Erie County's assigned counsel programs criminal division and is the legislative committee chair for the New York State Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. So does the governor's proposal tie future increases to, say, inflation, like she's looking to do with the state's minimum wage rate? Or should you and I plan on having this conversation again, say, in 2042, uh, when you're looking for legislative action to get an assigned counsel uh, raise? We've been very, very clear with you know everybody we've spoken to in the, in the legislature as well as the executive branch that installing a cost of living an automatic cost of living increase in this statute is really a desired quantity because, like you just said, we're going to be having this discussion every single year when inflation goes up and costs go up and everything else. You know, the federal system is really the way to go. The federal system has a rate and they've got a COLA built into it so that every year the rate goes up without having to go back to the United States you know, House and, and Senate to get an increase in the rate. Um, that's very much what we would like here. And we've told them that. We've said, listen, you guys can either key it to the CPI, you can key it to the, what the, whatever the feds decide that they do at their rate, uh, or you can establish a commission to decide what, what the increase is. But simply setting the rate like we did back in 2004 and then letting it languish for 19 years while costs increase and inflation increases and the cost of defense increase substantially um, is really not the way to go. Well, turning to another aspect of the budget, the governor is calling for $40 million in additional funding for counties to potentially hire hundreds of new prosecutors, uh, which is supposed to help district attorneys' uh, offices develop crime strategy plans and reduce case backlogs. What are your thoughts on this investment? So, I mean, it's actually a bit more than even 40. If you take a look at what the governor proposed last year as well as what she's proposing now for the hiring of more prosecutors, for discoveries, a little bit of money for for fentanyl prosecutions, it's about $127 million over the last two years. We, as as the defense community, we do not begrudge the prosecutors any of this money. In fact, we we strongly believe that they should get it. Um, Speaking about discovery, Discovery has been an, an unbelievable fit to the defense community and our clients. You know, the idea that we're getting this discovery far in advance of when we ever used to get prior to the, the discovery reforms, that we're able to make informed, that we're able to see what the prosecutor's files look like, you know, far in advance of trial, you know, it, it's been a, an amazing reform. But it wasn't funded. They put this into effect. They say, you guys will just work it out with, with the resources that you currently have. We know it's going to result in you having to watch, you know, hundreds of hours of more body camera footage. We know you're going to have to review things far in advance. When they come in, you're going to have to, you know, make arguments based upon the sufficiency of, of the discovery given by the prosecutors. But you'll just work that out with the, with the capacity that you currently have. And they said it for both sides. It wasn't just for us. They said it for the prosecution, too. Well, that's kind of a non-starter. It's, it's sort of like the dog who catches the car. You know, you're not sure what to do with it once you get it. Giving this money to the prosecutors so they can hire more people to review the discovery, so they can hire more people on the logistics side to get it to us sooner, to install technology fixes that that allow us to get this discovery in in a more streamlined way rather than get some of it on you know CDs or some of it on flash drives and the rest of it on portals and things of that nature. Um, you know, trying to come up with one system, you know, perhaps even a statewide system that deals with this 
is really something that would be beneficial. So we don't begrudge them any of that money. But you can't give $127 million to prosecutors for you know, discovery implementation and then, and then tell defenders, hey, listen, I know we said when the discovery law went into effect, you know, we're not going to give you uh, – we're just going to let you do what you, know, what you do with the capacity you currently have. It just, it just doesn't work. So they're going to have you know, a significant advantage over the defense community in terms of review and logistics – that really will then tilt the playing field back to, you know, not necessarily where it was, but certainly not in a direction that we need to go. So what we're asking for is, is a, the exact amount that the prosecutors have gotten over the last two years in the executive budget and, you know, in the, in the 2022 fiscal year budget, $127 million that would then be distributed across the state um, to offices, do things like hire paralegals and install technology fixes and smooth the way toward review and management uh, of all of this discovery material. And generally speaking, is there any benefit to defendants if there is an increase in prosecutors around the state? Obviously, the idea of reducing case backlogs sounds like something that would be beneficial for people who might be behind bars uh, waiting for their trial. So what do you think of that ar- argument? Is that a-, a net positive for the system? I mean, if, if building efficiencies in in the system, and I know you know efficiency can sometimes be a be a dangerous word when we're talking about the criminal legal system, but reducing the amount of time someone may have to sit at Rikers Island uh, waiting for their case to be adjudicated because the prosecutor's office that's dealing with that case doesn't have enough resources to uh, prosecute the case is is a, is a benefit. I mean, the idea that you know, we would be able to get to, you know, offers on cases quicker, that we would be able to get cases to trial quicker, that we'd have more people looking at cases that may not pass muster rather than simply just sending them up the chain and saying, let the, let the courts work it out, I think it can be beneficial to the entire system as a whole. Well, we've been speaking with Kevin Stottlemyre. He's an attorney who is the first deputy defender for Erie County's Assigned Counsel Programs Criminal Division and is the Legislative Committee Chair for the New York State Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. Kevin, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Anytime, David. Thank you. Support for the Capital Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information.